guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going on a special adventure. I'm going on a ghost hunting tour. This is a tour of an abandoned asylum. Me, my cousin, and my brother are going to go to this tour. Of course, it would be fun if it was just us three ghost hunting through the building, but I thought trying the tour just to see how it was, if we liked it, that sort of situation, then we could always come back. So, here's a little bit of history on the Sheboygan Asylum, and then you can join us on our journey. Whew. The asylum was opened in June of 1876 in Winooski to house the chronically insane. The hospital was under the direction of Glanville Jewett, who had about 22 people under his care. On February 19th, 1878, four of the 22 inmates died from a fire and the building burned down. That sucks. <laughs> the wooden building was completely destroyed. So Druitt was looking into building a new facility when he, too, died later that April of injuries from the fire. <laughs> the county board made the decision to build a new facility closer to the Sheboygan city limits. In 1881, the county purchased 19 acres located just west of today's Roth Company grounds bordered by Superior and Erie Avenues. During construction, the patients were kept in neighboring homes. It was built under an 1881 state law that provided funds for the care of the insane in county asylums, which opened on June 7, 1882. This was called the County Hospital, but became known as the Asylum. In addition, the following year increased the building's capacity from 40 to 90. Another fire on December 29, 1892 claimed the life of the night watchman who found it. The asylum farmed its land to feed and employ the inmates. By 1911, after further expansions and the acquisition of an adjacent farm through a bond issue, it stood on 309 acres of land and held a capacity of 225 inmates. In 1925, there were discussions about a land swap between the asylum and the Mission House College. City officials and residents were partially encouraged by the project as it would transform the city into a college town rather than, you know, one with an asylum. The project lost momentum, presumably due to money. At the same time, a former resident of the asylum spoke out about insufficient food during his stay. The accusations were refuted and proven false, but the facility ended up closing to patients in 1940, having become dilapidated and was demolished in 1960. Pick and Save and Advocate Aurora Health Center were built in 1983 and 1985, respectively, on the former asylum plot. The Sheboygan County Comprehensive Health Care Center was built in 1940 at N3773 Garden Parkway in Sheboygan Falls and was a nursing home for elderly as well as housing the mentally ill and people with developmental disabilities. During World War II, it was requisitioned by the U.S. military, and from 1944 to 1945, as Camp Sheboygan housed German and Italian prisoners of war. The backstory tells us that during that spring of 1942, when things looked especially grim for the Allies, it was rumored that Adolf Hitler planned an airdrop of weapons to his soldiers held prisoner at detention camps in England. That very real fear led to the United States agreeing to take charge of prisoners captured by the Brits in 1942. Thousands of prisoners of war, German and Italian, were brought to the United States and housed for the duration of World War II. The first Germans arrived in January of 1944. By 1945, the area was seeing a labor shortage and increase in agricultural needs. As a result, those POWs were deployed in area farm fields and factories that needed labor force. Wisconsin also had three times the number of POWs in the fields than neighboring Minnesota. All right, that's just, why Wisconsin, though? <laughs> they were largely credited to saving the crops during 1944 to 1945, growing seasons, according to the research center. POWs were not required to work, but many opted out of boredom and the ability to earn money and coupons and beer. The camp was open through December of 1945. Although the POWs were expected to go home immediately following the war, the majority of German prisoners continued working in the U.S. until 1946. In 1969, the center became an acute care facility for the mentally ill, and until 1975, it also offered alcohol and drug rehabilitation. 
1978, it was converted into a residential center for people with developmental disabilities and chronic illnesses. Starting in 1988, these forms of residential care were phased out in Wisconsin, and the center closed in 2002. The medical center building covers 2,752 square feet, a system of tunnels running beneath it. The empty medical center building has attracted urban explorers and stories that it is haunted. Rumors that the building is haunted and that the nurses committed suicide were explored in the episode 10 of the second season of the travel show Destination Fear. There are rumors of people getting their hair pulled, scratched, slapped, hearing voices, nurses screaming, seeing disembodied well, hearing disembodied voices, seeing apparitions, you know, the whole shebang. So me, my cousin, and my brother are going to investigate. Technically, we're on a tour, but there is some investigation involved. There is no videotaping allowed on the tour, but we are allowed to take pictures in a few areas. So it's not going to be the most exciting video because you won't be able to follow along with us as we go through the tour, but you will get to see us arriving at the asylum, which will probably be creepy. And you get to see a few photos that I take while inside. And if we have any experiences, you'll get to hear about it afterwards. But for now, let's go. All right, guys, we are in the car ready for our adventure. Ethan, are you excited? I'm hungry as well, I am. <laughs> Ben, are you excited? I'm excited and hungry at the same time. <laughs> Alright, so we have a two and a half hour, maybe three hour, depending on traffic, drive ahead of us to go to this asylum. And once we get into town, we actually are going to get there early so we get to eat and explore. It's going to be fun. And get robbed. And murdered. Maybe get robbed and murdered. That could be the end of the oh, video. There's two biscuits in here. It's like a bonus. <laughs> so let's no. go, shall we? It said, Woo! It said, Hey guys, that is the end of the video. Ethan, were you spooked? No, not really. <laughs> Ethan was scared. You were scared, Ethan. No. <laughs> ben, what about you? Oh, bitch. Not scared. <laughs> the problem is we couldn't film in there. Like, they refused to let us film. Like, if we tried, they'd yell at us or kick us out. And, like, a TV us. show filmed there, which I will link below. And they had to pay, like, $6,000. And I was like, I ain't risking paying money or getting yelled at uh, so all we really could do was take pictures where they said we could take pictures so we took pictures literally everywhere we could and we got some creepy ones don't know if it means there's ghosts they could just be creepy oh. I will go through the evidence tomorrow and show you guys what we got it's not gonna be as exciting as if we were filming or got audio clips but I think it'll be fun so yeah let's uh, drive home 
Woo!